It is show time. <sighs> Welcome to the jungle. We've got one mic again today. We had a moment where it worked. <laughs> we had a, a moment where we thought, wow, it finally it, we got it going. And then all of a sudden, the agony of defeat. Mm. Today, 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 we've got Nianisio. Nianiso. Nian, Nianiso. 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 And with Nianiso, we are going to be discussing struggling commitments on a, a wonderful, wonderful chaos. chaos. Hello, Bambos. It appears that our guest can't find what he needs. Just go to copy. I'm going to give him what he needs. And go to Facebook. And then we're going to go to Facebook and see if we can give him his login details so that we can get him online. Let's see. Here we hit. We're sending it to you now. And we will messenger. hopefully get him on in one moment's time. It's always great when we prepare for our shows. You know that. And if he doesn't come on, who cares? Because we can talk about these subjects with or without anyone who's here, as you know, very well. Exactly. Okay. So, <sighs> this is cool. This is very cool. I need your head in the game. So, now we need to slow you down, baby, and get you back to that nirvana space. I am in complete nirvana space. Okay, cool. Because I thought you were in this, oh, my God, he's not on. What am I going to do space? No, so, I completely surrendered. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Then I'm. I'm, I'm after, after all, it's a wonderful chaos. It sure is. And mm. this episode is cool, and it's cool because he's a friend of mine. That's also cool. <laughs> yeah, that is also cool. He he's a friend of yours. But what's cool about this episode and. Um, you know what I think I'll do is every time I want to say his name, I'll point to you. Nianiso. <laughs> <laughs> Nianiso. <laughs> Nianiso is willing to come on to discuss a topic that most men are like very anxious to bring to the light. Yeah. Because on some ways, if we have these urges, the emotional struggle of seeing other women and feeling this draw towards this, this female attraction, then there's often this feeling like, uh, I can't really share that. Mm. And, and men often are shamed, obviously, when they bring it up, because then the idea is that we're minimizing the female that we're with as if the as if the human urge doesn't exist yeah like as if it has to be suppressed in order for uh in order for us to be considered good men so a lot of the things we talk about on the show are <laughs> see you smiling now <laughs> a lot of the things we talk about on the show are how is it when we allow full expression and not feel as if we're wanting anyone else to feel poorly about it. But in fact, some may feel poorly because they are triggered by the fact that maybe a man expresses his uh, attraction to another woman. And, and in societally, we've never given that a place. In general, we haven't given it a place. <sighs> yeah. We've said, hey, you can't do that. You know, as if it's abnormal or not, not say in our DNA to do so. So, what's really cool is that we have Nianiso <laughs> on the show. Andy, slow down, slow down. Say it, Nianiso. I wrote it down phonetically, <laughs> Nianiso. Bravo, you got it. But, but some reason I have this sort of phonetic thing that happens with me that I often forget words, and this is one of those words that's really hard for my brain to retain. <laughs> No problem. So but by the end of the 60 minutes, you have it. I hope so. So we are going to talk to Niani. So uh, I got it uh, around that subject. And uh, and we didn't have a time. There's one question that I will always ask before we go live <coughs> with a guest, Yeah. which is what does he not want to talk about? Like that's the people might not know that. But we do ask each guest before we begin, like, what is it you don't want us to talk about? Because we'll go everywhere. You like that should be well understood. But we do mm. like want to respect that. And we haven't got to ask him that. So why don't we make that the first question to him? Perfect. <laughs> shall, shall we bring him on? Are we of ready? course we bring him on. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you Niani So. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. 
<laughs> Hello. I'm happy to see your doing? audio works. Great. Yeah, well, um, I tried my best to prepare. Thank you for being on. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> it's funny, before the session, I was like, okay, cool. What do I need to do? Oh, I need to make sure I'm prepared. Oh, I'm ready. Okay, cool. And then I logged on to the Facebook link, and then and then the first thing I see Andy saying is like, if he doesn't come on, who cares? I'm like, no, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I care. <laughs> I, I, so, now yeah. I understand your, now I understand. I saw this word, I care. I was like, I don't know what that means. I care, but oh, now okay, I got okay, it. Okay, okay, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Do you realize that we've, anyway, had, um, we, we've had several shows where the guest hasn't showed up, and we ended up talking about the subject that this guest was supposed to talk about? That's happened already. Uh, I get that. I uh, get that. And and one thing I appreciate about um, how I I, I in, well, interacted with 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 that is is. I just got from the get go. Okay, cool. This is an easy going interview. This is gonna be. This is gonna be light. Like there is no um, weight or expectation that's layered on top of of either of us, and and it's just gonna be like, okay, cool. Whatever happens, happens. That's kind of a container that we've got going on. And uh, as much as I was going, I care. I appreciated that. Like we've got that lightness going on. Yeah. We wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, the we we actually said between us, if ever one of us starts getting it seriously, like starts like creating issues in, like it's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even when I saw you not coming okay. on, I I looked at Bambos and I started seeing him kind of go into that intense space, and I was like, okay, if he goes any further than that space, we got to do a timeout and kind of look in each other's eyes and do our connection games. Like, where are we now? You know. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, the seriousness was I'm holding my phone talking to you while being live. Like that was a bit of an awkward moment. But uh Do you know what? You're probably that, yeah. also like trans you're also probably getting that from me. I was like, where's the link? How does that? Where's the photo reading? Where's the... I'm here now, so good. So, <laughs> so the, the first question we have for you, Yaniso, is is there anything that we shouldn't touch upon? Because like um, Andy said, we'll go everywhere. <laughs> Nah, there's nothing that I feel like we can't go. And if in any moment that I feel un, um, sturdy around a certain theme or topic, then I'll let you know in that moment. Sounds good. It's mm. awesome to 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 engage with you, Andy. Um, it's it's nice to to see you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Hmm. By the way, where are you physically located at the moment? Um, I'm in the passage between the kitchen and the bathroom. Nice. In South Africa, Johannesburg, in an apartment that um, I'm soon to be moving out of. Wow. I, I'm, I'm wondering because like the last three days, I don't know. I don't know who it is exactly, but I have several South Africans that are reading my book, The Last Letter, and they're all commenting and, and posting it on my wall. So I've got this beautiful, I don't know, contingent of South Africans at the moment that are all interacting with, uh, with my book in this way, which has been really beautiful. That's really yeah. beautiful. I, yeah. I look forward to engaging with it. I remember when I um, first started to talk about you um, with Bambos, I got the link to your to your website for the mm. book, and um, I just read a brief, uh, rough, what do you call it, overview of, mm. of it, and um, hopefully I will acquire it soon. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine those people probably came through you, so thank you for whatever energy you put in the world to get them in interested. Um, I've got all my questions lined up, Bambos, but he is your friend and your guest, so I'm ready to take a back seat as long as you'd like me to. You can fire the first question. I don't. Nothing comes so, up. so I think you heard in the intro when I mentioned, like, I've often seen subjects like commitment. There's something where one puts themselves in a very vulnerable, vulnerable position when they talk about a subject where a lot of others have judgment towards. And I'm wondering 
how you feel, oh. if you feel any of that when you are going to join our talk today or not. Um, before I answer that question, <clears throat> something that I love to do whenever I get onto um, engagement spaces with, with anyone is um, just setting a container, setting an intention and breathing and then diving into wherever we go. Do you mind okay. doing that? I'm totally in for that. Um, since I propose it, I, I, I can lead the way if you guys are happy with that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to take a deep breath in. And dropping into the body and just feeling our body and everything in it, from our organs to our feelings to our spirit and to our energy and emotions. And having named that, um, I bring myself and I invite you guys to call in your self, all of yourself, your ancestors, your ancestry, your spirit, your guides, your higher self, and all that you are aware that you walk with and journey with. And for all that you're going to be diving into, we're going to be diving into um, for the entirety of ourselves to be walking with us and to guide and to give the input and to allow service to move in every direction that it needs to. <sighs> for myself, for yourselves, for the world and for people who are going to be dropping in. And calling in your intention. Your intention, uh, remembering the intention that brought you to creating this um, space, this container, this channel. Mm -hmm. And whatever intention dropped in for you guys for inviting me to be here. And the intentions that ignited for me for accepting the invitation. And once all of that has dropped in, taking a final deep breath in. And, uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Um, I might, I might talk a quick loop and, and try my best to get to, to the question that you asked me. Um, But I'm really grateful to be here. One thing that I really appreciate about the world is in a work that we do as men, conversations that we allow ourselves to have that aren't often um, had, um, that people may shy away from. And um, it's such an honor to meet new people who are coming from different um, approaches of nurture and bringing nurture to the masculine space um, in exploring conversations like these that can be had for not just men and masculinity, but for the world at large. I feel quite moved right now because um, the, since lockdown has sort of loosened up its reins in South Africa, um, there's been a surge of um, abuse upon women that has come up and um, has brought up a lot of hurt for me and a lot of hurt for women and people around me. And my understanding of it is that men have gotten to a shadowy dark space around how to express what's moving in them mm. and communicate it. And um, they almost can't help what comes out in, in what they've been trying to um, wrangle and keep down. Um, so the conversation of commitment for me and how I've journeyed it. 
I think we can all agree that the first and most important commitments that we can ever make are to ourselves. And I'm very sure that layer by layer that we're going to, um, you know, touch on various ways and places that we are called to commit as humans. Um, the most progressive work that I've ever done, that I've done in the world has been around bringing that initial commitment back to myself. No matter what it is that someone or a space or a system might be asking me to commit to, whether it's a contract or whatever, um, if it's unclear around how um, the, in, the source of the commitment is from me or for me, um, I found that I've been unable to serve those commitments. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to say here and then. Uh, I hope that touched enough on your question. <laughs> um, the question was geared towards the idea that there might be people that judge whatever it is you have to say, yeah. meaning the people that say men need to or have to or should be, so all of the very judgmental. And if I take away your response, then I'd say just from how you've answered is that you're accepting of that. That's not something that you have a problem with. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Where have you found the most struggle with commitment in your life specifically? Relationship. Um, I, I've struggled with with opening up and um, surrendering all of my trust in a relationship. At first, as as I was growing up, I. I was quite open and naive, um, and so trust came very easily. I think many of us were like this. And then I got um, my first big heartbreak. Um, I, I had a few disappointments with people in relationship before that, but around about university, I, I had my first big love and my first big heartbreak, and I was let down around a commitment that I thought I had made with with the person that I was um, um, journeying with in that relationship. And um, for her own reasons and taking care of what was important to her, she, she abandoned the commitment that we were making. And um, ever since then, I guess, my cynical side kicked in and I've always felt that no matter how much I open up to a relationship, I'll always reserve just a little bit that I'll never give away. And with the, the work that I've been doing and more I've been journeying into that space um, of, of how can I um, love more, love better, love deeper, love more potently, um, There's always been that, that little side of me that was cynical um, and too afraid to, to totally give away what I perceive to be my power. I continue to, I guess, because I'm still working through that. Um, and, and that part of me has, has led me to, to move into spaces that were out of the integrity of the relationship that I, I, I wished to have and wish to have. Um, and it's been, it's, been, it's been beautiful to encounter that part of myself because I've hidden that, that layer of myself from myself. 
Mm. And 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 I was like, nah, I'm loving with all that I have, and I'm, I'm committing to this relationship with with, with everything. And um, when 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 I experienced the little slip ups and the little telltale signs of if I'm still thinking about retreating or how I'd leave this relationship if it hurts too much or uh, what who I'd go and start dating if this doesn't work out. I think there's some shit going on. <laughs> and and it's so weird because I experienced like an, an inner voice going, no, 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 so good, you know, so nothing's going on. It's not, 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 not. And I'm like, nah, homie, let's talk about it. <laughs> and I found that um, what has what has caused sort of like a, 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 a brittle portion of my uh, ability to commit um, has, has, has been around um, the wounds that I've had around relationships. Interesting. Um, as I hear you speak, you know, I often talk in relationship to my mom's death, because in a weird way, when you talk about the betrayal, I uh, I see that in some way, although it wasn't a betrayal, but it the loss and the pain of it felt like almost like a betrayal of the life that I had or expected. So mm. after my mom was killed by a drunk driver, right? The the mm. feeling I had was that I couldn't really leave myself open to that hurt again. I mm. couldn't allow another, like the woman that I allowed to replace my mother, she died of cancer a few years later. So mm. it was almost like every time I opened my heart, I had another feeling of deep loss to the point that I said, wow, so it's just safer not to leave my heart open so I don't have to feel that pain. Mm. I'd probably ask you this question as well as I, as I am asking myself is what do I think, what do we think is there to learn if we open ourselves up to be hurt like that again um, and let the trust and let the openness and let the commitment and let the surrender be absolutely vulnerable. You want to go first? Well, I mean, the, you know, the journey I took with the last letter was just what you were speaking to. So I, mm -hmm. I traveled America with 60 groups and just basically shared my story and cried in front of people I didn't know situations that didn't feel necessarily appropriate with my family mm -hmm. who actually already had different ideas maybe of who I was or wasn't. So uh, I kind of put myself in a position to actually invite people to see the most raw parts of me and allow mm -hmm. that to become its own journey of, of sort of healing for me and for them. Mm -hmm. Because what um, I, what, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, sorry to cut you. No, I guess I guess I guess what I was saying, what I learned, is up until that point, I used other people as a reason for me not to allow that level of vulnerability, and from that moment forward, I I didn't. There was no one that I needed to worry about with that vulnerability. I didn't need to be concerned that me being emotionally sharing my vulnerability would possibly be difficult for them, which would have been an excuse I would have used not to be vulnerable in the past. They can't mm. take it. It's too much for them. Or they'll judge me or they're emotionally shut down. Yeah. So um, so I, I'm 50 this year. Um, both parents are dead. Um, uh, 50 as of three days ago. Um, I, uh, I'm in some ways... I don't feel like I'm looking to my future as terms of like, what am I going to create? I'm looking to how do I want to die? And, uh, and when you look towards that as your future, it changes a lot of your perspective of how you want to live, you know? So, yeah. I hear that. Um, a friend of mine, I, I jumped on a call with um, some weeks ago, said to me something that, 
popped open a new response to to vulnerability and opening up. He said, because um, we, we were setting intentions, as, as I love to do before we open containers of, of conversation. And um, he said he would like to open the space where we can be vulnerable. And for some reason in that call, I thought to myself, like, actually, we say this word a lot, and I kind of get the dictionary meaning, but like, when you say it, what, what does it mean? And he says, um, saying that he's being vulnerable to him means that I am showing you the most tender parts of me. I'm showing you the, the, the part of me um, that if you were to penetrate in a certain way, you would have the power to, to deeply wound me or even kill me. I am saying that I am offering you and showing you my Achilles heel and trusting you to take care of it. Um, and for me, that's that that moved me in a big way. Um, to be able to trust someone with what can kill you. Mm. Um, I'd love to nuance that, if I may. I would, because mm. I'd have to phrase it from another wor way. In my, I have to trust myself. Why would you say that? Because as soon as I feel at peace within myself, everyone else can go to hell. I'm not vulnerable for them. I'm at peace with the vulnerability in myself. I would I would often not think about myself when it comes to what's what can kill me because my feelings around like would I ever like knowing that that's going to kill me would I ever uh, negligently handle that would would i would i would i consider being the one responsible to kill myself out of neglect um and 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 from for me it's a more i want to speak back to this too but it, it's a more scary place to go i hope you make me my life Mm, as important and sacred to you as I would as I give you this thing that would be that would kill me <sighs> um, and then it takes me to a place where I'm thinking about um, why are we so afraid of death <laughs> yeah. um, and there are the obvious conversations around fearing death, but death is a place in the conversation that that um, I believe deserves better investigation um, uh, yeah, in so. terms of just exploring exploring the beauty of it. Sorry, yes? Yeah, so. Yes, leader. Tits and ass. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I noticed for a moment I'm holding my breath. And you're one of the most charismatic people I know when you speak. It, like, I could listen. You could be a fucking priest. Like, I love listening to your words just landing me like, and I just breathe and I can just meditate on your voice. Now... Mm. I, I want to, I, I, actually, I said tits and ass to shock you, to shock us, but also to, to bring us back to that raw, masculine energy of commitment and mm -hmm. the struggle that we have as men 
when being in a committed, loving relationship, I love my fucking wife. Like I love her to bits. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I'm on the streets, there's this part of me is like, oh wow, I wanna, I wanna seduce and conquer. Like mm -hmm. I, I want us to drop in, not from the, from not from the space of, ah, just speaking, but really from like this. So tits and ass, Nyani. So tell us. Uh, what, what would you like to know about tits and ass? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could talk. I could talk in, in different directions around that. I was looking at tits and ass last in, 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 in relation to commitments. So you go on the street today, and you you in, you see a beautiful woman, and maybe mm -hmm. even connect to a moment where you've had that. And walk me through how you navigate that situation. Um, it's a continuous uh, journey and, and place of exploration and understanding myself for me because I just did a post on my men's group around um, being a slave to the oversexed society that we live in and the oversexed energy that we run. Um, and I, I've experienced and I continue to experience within myself that oversexed energy. And um, I still respond in a very raw way when I see a great ass or great tits and just great physical physique. Mm. Um, and my challenge or my conversation with myself is around how much of my power am I giving away when I go into those spaces? How would I like to engage with them? And um, what would I like it to, to, to mean to me and how would I like to hold it? And I'm so blessed to be in a relationship in a marriage with my wife where she's allowed me to make how I engage with that less about her and the relationship and more about me. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of the time we, we, we're in these relationships and we're often thinking, oh, I shouldn't be looking at this ass and these tits because my wife or because my girlfriend would, wouldn't like that, whatever. And um, I used to think like that for the better part of my seven year relationship with my wife. Um, and it's been the past year and a half that she's been like, no, homie, I want you to journey that space and come to the health that you want to for yourself rather than for me. And I found that that's the greatest gift that a, a human being can give to you. And, and it's even more important to give it to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but I was so, so, so fortunate to have a wife that was, that was willing to just give it to me and say, do it for you, because she understands that the commitment that I make between myself and the tits and the asses that are out there in the world are going to be the ones that are the long-standing, long-lasting foundations of the relationship that I have with them um, in my relationship with my wife, and therefore we'll be able to go, okay, cool, look, this is how I feel about tits and ass and this chick and that chick and who's hot and who's not and who I'd love to bang before I die or whatever it is. Um, and her and I can come into a uh, meeting ground around all of that. Like, um, I'm, once again, I'm blessed to, to be in a place where, where what I want doesn't mean um, an end all or be all. It's just what I want. Mm. She can bring what she wants to go. Look, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna have sex with Channing Tatum before like I die. And I'm like, okay, cool, thanks for telling me. This is what <laughs> I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the kind of that, that's the kind of relationship that we have. And, and um, sometimes like what I want will 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 be given room to be met, and sometimes it won't. Um, but the beauty of it is just allowing myself to want it. Um, therefore, whatever it is, however I choose to, to, to relate and, and commit to that desire, that want, that calling, that feeling will, will be met, honestly. Mm. So in terms of tipping ass for me, 
at this stage of my relationship is I don't want to deny myself the raw human, the raw man, the raw masculine, the raw savage, the hunter, the killer, the, the, the one that, that knows how to pursue and get what he wants, um, um, that he's ignited by when it comes to desire. Um, so I don't want to um, even try to step out of my body and, and pretend or seek to be a monk um, around these conversations. And so I, I, how, I, how I'm currently dealing with it is like, cool, how can I be true to my raw energy, my raw savage energy, if I may just call it that, and also at the same time honor the power that I give to something and the, and the power that it has over me. And that's my journey, is like, I enjoy how it feels to be ignited by beauty um, and lust. But also at the same time, I don't want it to have a power over me where I'm trying to achieve something, get something done, commit to something. Um, and, at the, and when I see a hot ass, I'm like, oh, shit. And then I've forgotten all about my life and what it is that I'm trying to do. I wanna, I wanna have um, this. My language is Tulsa, is ukuzinza, which means like a sturdiness and a groundedness and a rootedness in self that I can go. Uh, beautiful. And where was I? And if my 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 life in that current space holds room to explore whatever that is, that is beautiful. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. What am I doing? Uh, love, wife, whatever. What do you think about cool? And I can go explore that. Um, but only from a place of groundedness and a rootedness and not be like a leaf in the wind that I have given over the power of the wind and make myself a leaf to tits and ass. That's that's my current standpoint. Maybe in a couple of months' time, you'll ask me about it again, and now I'll, I'll have a different response. But sure. currently, that's that's how I feel. Like I'd love to explore and continue to journey mm. with, with with sex, mm. and beautiful mm. hot women that never end in this world. I used to think that shit would end. I'd be like, you know what? After I fuck twenty five of the hottest of the hot, I'll be done. I don't know there's <laughs> nothing out there to explore. After 25, you're like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that's why I'm kind of here going, cool, this shit is never going to end. So how do I want it to be with me? Mm. That was beautiful. I, uh, I could completely identify with uh, your whole journey that you went through. You know, I, um, I often find that uh, if I suppress a thing, like I, you know, I write about it a lot in all of my thing and all the writing is that once you suppress it, it begins to define you. In in oh. in not allowing that thought or that emotion to be, you actually become a reaction to that thought or emotion. So when you were talking about the wind, I'm laughing, just thinking, yeah, of course, if you don't celebrate whatever's going on inside of yourself, then it comes out in these contorted, sick ways. And we get and and that's what we that that that's the cost and a lot of times we don't talk about the cost of things so the cost of things yeah. is the is the real issue is that there is a cost to pay by not allowing yourself to be present with what's going on inside yourself and if society shames and says you can't or you shouldn't it's not right then all of a sudden like your life is kind of like screwed cuz now you're trying to manage something in a way that never works it's never sustainable mm. so yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that contributes greatly to what I touched on earlier around the abuse that's happening around the world um, between or uh, men unto women. And yeah. it's, it's, it's the sad, unrealized um, state of, of men's denial of what's happening inside of them. Yeah. 
Like you, you stated it earlier, by the way, you got that mic free to yourself now because this one apparently works in the middle of everything. Um, when, um, when, when I'm looking at this, this whole, uh, the whole, the, the, what do you call the increase in, in, uh, abuse and spousal abuse, yeah. like it's really so apparent that every time we suppress it, it'll come out. And if the tension gets greater, people lose their jobs. Uh, people are in closer proximity, so they don't have a chance to escape maybe whatever the things they were suffering from. It comes out in these violent ways. And it's uh, and it's just yeah. so sad. And then it speaks more to the thing you were speaking to earlier when you were starting is the importance of, say, men's circles, where people have the opportunity to share an experience where, in general society, if they were to share that, people might judge them or think, well, you can't say that because the shame mm. of mm. what society all, all often already has judgment towards <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's mm. so many things i could say about this but um i, the, I guess in, in light of this current conversation and um this topic that we're talking about is what new commitments can and um, should men be making to themselves for for addressing what's moving inside of them? Um, I think that's what we're, we're called into is going, okay, cool. We've been committing to this thing called society standards and what we should think and what we shouldn't think, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Um, and it's not serving us because just like you said, it will keep coming out in these violent ways, in these outbursts, um, whether it's actual violence or just a violent pouring out of an overindulgence in alcohol and overindulgence in sex and overindulgence in drugs and, you know, all of this stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's not serving what is actually needing to be felt heard spoken about and so the question is what new commitments man can you make with yourself human being actually because women have their own journeys around things that we we in society are holding them um sort of prisoner to that they shouldn't be feeling um what new commitments can we be making and should we be making to to serve ourselves, to serve what's moving within. It's it's something that needs to be preached upon that everybody starts reanalyzing what it is that they currently have as commitments. Is it serving them? And if it's not, what new commitments should you be making? You know, it's funny because uh, sometimes when we move in the direction of the, the when you say commitments, I feel like there's only one commitment that's required in order that people don't confuse themselves and think that there's something difficult because it's already difficult enough. And, and yeah. for me, the commitment would be I commit to not denying my emotions. Mm. And if that, if that commitment's made, then you can make a second commitment and I will approach it with vulnerability and not defensiveness. I mean, And then, it, 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 and yeah. then I don't, I don't see anything that can't be discovered in that space, because it's just yeah. my ego doesn't block me, whatever we want to call ego or what, however we want to identify it, and I leave a process in place where I can actually learn, discover, and grow, and who knows where that takes, what speed it takes me, but it's not mm. inhibited. That's beautiful, um, and you would think that. It's obvious. You think it's obvious. Like, I know I should obviously be able to feel what I'm feeling, but we don't. And yeah. and the reason for that is we don't feel safe to. Mm, nice. And I'd probably say that the first thing to do is um, mm. upon saying I give myself permission to feel what I'm feeling, mm. create for yourself or call it in for yourself a space for you to safely feel it, safely explore it, safely express it. 
Um, I found for myself, and this is this is something I've been so so grateful to to really um, engage with is I was scared to talk about some of the things that I thought. I and a friend of mine. Um, Inshallah, let me speak to this with with, with healing words. Um, is I was talking to a friend of mine, and we were engaging with the scariness of five years. And five years, I'm I'm talking about between um, a, a woman's growth and how we look at a woman that's twenty years old in a certain way and go. God damn. And then you look at her five years earlier and she's 15 and you're, you're um, shaming yourself for, for, for thinking anything close to, to, to that like uh, uh, appreciation, attraction for the woman that she is. Hmm. Um, and, and exploring the difference between a pedophile and, and a man appreciating a woman. Um, and there, if you think about it, there are no safe spaces to really talk about that openly and to explore how to, how I as a man distinguish the difference. Um, and the safe space that I found for myself to explore topics like that, that are as tender as that, is between myself and myself and other human beings that have the same commitment to themselves. Um, and for myself to myself, it has not even been talking because uh, sometimes talking is some of these things that, that you, you feel um, are terrifying or have been terrifying for me. And I found that journaling has been the most fruitful, useful tool that I found to, to engage with tender topics and mm. themes within myself. And, um, mm. it, 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 and, and, and not just journaling and writing stuff with no um, end, but writing them with an intention to... To, to bring to health. So I'd begin my journaling process with going, I'm afraid of this, I'm feeling that, I'm scared of that, I'm hurt by this. And then therefore bring it to a resolve of, is all of that true? Am I a pedophile? Am I a sick man? Do I deserve to be shunned from society? And then um, answer that. Um, and after answering that with, no, I'm not sick, it's all a lie and whatever, then what it is, and then I'd continue to journal, sort of to, 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 to conclude that is by going, who am I and what am I and what do I want to be? And that will bring me to the resolve of the human that I, uh, that I, I, I am seeking to bring. And, and um, using the tools that I have, um, to then journey whatever wounds have come up, including just simple good old crying. Mm. Mm. So yeah, um, we agreed on that, and and I totally feel you on giving ourselves permission to feel, and best way to do that is establish a safe space to feel it, yeah. and and safe ways to journey those feelings. Yeah. And it's interesting. Cause I think in the, uh, like I, I, uh, I was, I have a, a new book that'll come out in a few weeks. And one of the chapters was about me going to Las Vegas and walking down this Fremont street. And in this moment, I was like one month in a journey where it was all very beautiful and very uh, like sitting with people, session after session, writing letters to loved ones as if the loved one would be dead the following day, like getting them to feel the urgency of life and then fully embrace the writing of that and then send or not send, that was their prerogative. And then I went back yeah. to, to Las Vegas and now I'm just because the hotel I got was cheapest was right on this sort of Fremont Street. And it was just, it was just like, 
crying out for attention, debauchery, naked ladies, guys and guitars and G-strings, just, just totally fighting for my attention, trying to create more and more drama. So, and what wow. I laughed at was I could feel my system starting to shut down. Like it was like, oh, I need to th put up a defense to let the stimulus that's coming at me hmm. um, like shelter myself a bit because I was in this raw space and now I'm in a space that's totally like abrasive. And it was really wow. interesting because as you spoke and as I now reflect on it, part of the journey that I've at least seen myself in at the moment is, wow, how do I find fully to be present in that vulnerability even in those spaces? And I think what happened in this case was I looked back out at the same street I was sort of judging and I saw these women dressed scandally and I just started to see them going home, paying the bills, coming home to their daughters. This businessman I saw on the street, like going for some escapism because the rest of their lives were so monotonous and full of no nothing to look forward to. Mm. In some beautiful way, it was like, wow, everything that took me away was now almost switched into another level of compassion. Mm. And, uh, it, and it's interesting because in this journey, I notice for myself, as I get into more and more tense discussions where you know, we'll talk about subjects that aren't necessarily comfortable. Others outside of our conversation could take a snippet of what we've spoken about and say, hey, look at these people. Bambos used the words tits and ass. And now we're going to like say, this is a bad show. You can't listen to, you know, like all of that exists. And yet to make full peace with all that is for me the ultimate journey. Like, where yeah. can I be at peace with everything as it comes in, wherever I am, with whatever the subject might be? And uh, I think that <sighs> the most beautiful takeaway that I can take for myself and let me just keep it to myself the most big, beautiful, biggest takeaway from this conversation is allowing ourselves to feel and explore everything. And mm -hmm. I feel like everything can be felt and explored if you have an intention to bring health, love, and nurture to it. Mm -hmm. Everything. I could just kiss you right Every now. Um, it's it's all about the intention that we have to, in in in, um, in in resolving whatever it is um, yeah, that right. we're we're moving through. Um, we need to stop demonizing and de well, let's just call it demonizing um, the things that come up for us because we have so much to move through to explore to feel and the more <laughs> the more that we keep them in that demon perception the more they will come up in our lives as these demonic actions words energies mm -hmm. i think of the movie and it's come up for the second time now for me today is um the movie moana you guys watch that no molana okay it's moana M O A N A. It's beautiful. Uh, find find some sort of streaming platform online. It's it's starring Dwayne the Rock Johnson, but it's all animation. It's an animation film. Um, geez, I want you guys to watch it, but I'm trying to not. Nah, fuck, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there um, there is this big monster that she needs to fight. Um, at um, towards the, the the resolve of the movie, and she realized she couldn't kill this demon. She couldn't win this war against this demon. And after fighting for some time, she realized that this demon was this sea goddess that was going to bring health to the world. It was, it was the one that she'd been seeking all along. Um, and 
what was missing was or rather how she became a demon was the fact that her heart was ripped from her um and when her heart was ripped from her she became the demon and all that needed to happen was for them to replace or put her heart back mm. this gem this jewel back in her in her in her body um and 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 the sea goddess that was going to bring life to the world would would come back um and basically mm. what just that translates to for me is that like all of these monsters that we make this world or that we find in the world are um so many unspoken conversations or conversations that have been demonized conversations that have been ripped love and nurture out of and if we're willing to put love and nurture back into them we can address and talk about anything and everything and um let it serve us as opposed to kill us yeah you brought in the word that really hit me home and i use it a lot is intention and um in my own work i notice that like i say some really absurd things when i'm coaching people like really absurd to the point you'd say that's almost offensive just take out the word almost and then you'd understand how far i go and and <laughs> and, and the reason that it it sort of lands is cuz people hear no judgment and they understand the intention of love behind it and in, in 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 a weird way if someone were to not be present and understand that the intention and the love and the vulnerability actually that you show by being that crass almost there's something that it's in 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 like in the presence of that you almost you you just you feel a sense of relaxation come over you you create an incredible bond with others by being clear in the intention space which in my mind would be being full of love without judgment and judgment being good or bad judgment we all have judgment but not putting a value on it and then people just mm. feel safe i mean that's what we want to do mm. with the show actually is we want to create a space mm. where people can be fully free and understand that on the end bambos and i we don't judge the behavior in terms of relativizing it as good or bad we just say oh that's what they do and then we see there's implications of for behavior so mm. thank you for i also fully... found that thank you thank yeah. you um i also found that sometimes if you've been running the pattern of shame in yourself in your life around certain thing enough sometimes you can't escape the judgment and therefore what do you do what i found for myself is go into it okay cool i am judging myself why am i judging myself and then find um a non-judgmental space of the judgment which will then take you deeper into that topic of whatever it is that you're trying to get to the root of yeah. um so yeah basically not as not trying to escape what it is that is the overwhelming shit that's facing you yeah <laughs> i don't see any other way than that by the way so bambos does it probably more aggressively than any other individual i know I bambos is bit, a legend i take a bit more tamed version of my own development or maybe not i just do it in leaps and bounds you do it kind of daily as far as i'm concerned bambos yeah. is mad uh is is beautiful it's mad <laughs> is madness is, is 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 healthy i feel like um he's doing everything that he needs to do to traverse all of uh, the shit that hadn't been addressed in his life previously and it's almost it's almost like he he's he's giving himself everything that he felt that he needed to give to himself what you would be calling right now your leaps and bounds your moments mm. and he and I I I relate so much because I've experienced myself do the same thing as like oh shit I've been denying myself this thing and then I found myself doing it like heavily because I'm almost catching up to the health 
and the nurture that I, I, I mm. should, that I've always wanted for my current self. Mm. And um, yeah, I admire him very much. Yeah. <sighs> Time flies by when you're having fun. Yeah. I've been feeling so much throughout this call. Um, thank you. Like, my heart hasn't stopped. I mean, it's it's less so now, but like from beginning up until maybe I said 15 minutes ago, I've been <laughs> feeling heart palpitations and emotions just stirring inside of me throughout. Mm. Um, thank you for inviting me into to that space and to this space and to this conversation and, uh, I'm grateful for the conversations that you guys are holding and the space that you guys hold. Mm. Thank you. I look forward to having you back on on another topic. I want. I, I was. I was thinking just now that actually, um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna connect with you further, Andy. Uh -huh. um, uh, I feel, I feel like there's there's a, a great well of wisdom that I'd love to, to to explore with you. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, send you a hug. Blessings. Much love, Nyan. Yeah, and we. By the way, we're with your wife on Friday. She told me. She's like, hey, I just got off a call Bravo. She was flirting with me. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should actually say if he's not flirting with me, then uh, there's a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I was like, oh, yes. I Don't know worry. that stuff is very well. <laughs> I'll be present during the call. I'll make sure everything stays okay. <laughs> no. I love you. I love I love all of you guys very well. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Love you, Nancy. Thank Bye. You. Oh, deep breath in, deep breath in to close the container. No. Ah, thank you. Thank you to everyone, our guys, and all that we've moved through and all that has allowed this to come to where it is. Come up and amen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Ah. Oh, the other hand. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll have another talk with him in the future, I'm sure. Absolutely. Hmm. Tomorrow, I am not here. Oh, you're not here. You are here with Niels. Oh, Niels joins, of course. Niels is here for 5 p.m. Claudia Jungstra is going to be discussing enlightened self-reliance. Claudia is quite a well-known Dutch artist. Uh, textile artist she's done some incredible work around like very well-known museums throughout the world and the cost star wars costumes for star wars like wow like that's got to be <laughs> up there with big achievements um on wednesday at 5 p.m we have karen lee talking about surviving an open marriage that's going to be cool i went to high school with karen so we're going to have a nice talk you get to have another high school reunion bambos loves those on thursday we've got truth i have it that's our talk. That's our talk, yes. And, and on Friday? Yana. Yana's coming on at what time? Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And we're going to talk about how I overcame rage, which I think is cool because in some ways you can imagine having to work through the emotions that we already discussed right now with Nyaniso. Nyaniso. Um, she probably had to have her own journey and we get to hear her side of that whole, uh, mm. that side of things, right? Yeah. Beautiful. So we uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of A Wonderful, wonderful Chaos. Chaos. <laughs>